Welcome to our artist lecture and our introduction for our next photo assignment for the class, Spaces and Places. So this is due the 19th of February at the end of day. And then we'll have a crit discussion board from the 18th through the 26th. So this is something you'll be active um, discussing in the discussion board. And there will be a page to talk about how to critique art. So the instructions are, we're going to be inspired by this artist lecture. There will be two separate artist lectures. We will explore landscape and interior photography. The goal is to convey a sense of place. Tell a story, emotion, or feeling with your photography. Photographs should have little to no people in the frame. Think about it. If the focal point is on anything that doesn't relate to place, then it probably isn't a good photograph for the project. Try to stick to a single place or a single type of place. Go inside, outside, and use this opportunity to explore areas around you. Think about a theme of your photographs. Let's start there. Think about all the places relating by some sort of common thread, or you're exploring a singular place. The images need to work together as a group and not as single images in a single thread. Uh, the images, again, Little to no people. If it's about people, no. And try to think about what your photograph is about. And if you're having difficulty thinking about it, think about if you were to show it to a friend and say, what do you think this picture is about? If it's about people in the frame, the answer is no, it's not a good photo. You should shoot about 48 photos or more. You're going to edit down your selection to 10 photographs. And all images need to be processed in camera raw or Lightroom, whatever one and in Photoshop, so you need to process them. Nothing should be straight out of camera. They should be at 300 dpi and no smaller than 8 by 10. They must be larger. Um, no flash, please. Uh, everything should be shot using manual photography. You'll submit a Google Drive folder, your name, dash, photography, assignment three, spaces and places, and your file names will be first name, last name, underscore, PA3, dash, hashtag, hashtag, this should be number, number for 01, 02, 03, through 10. Number sign, number sign is never to be in a file name. And you should submit your JPEGs. This is going to be worth 100 points. The rubric is on Canvas. So we're going to talk a little bit about some other photographs to inspire us. So... This is, might be helpful to think about travel photography, real estate, architecture photography, um, location, um, what the viewer can bring their knowledge in. So what can the viewer bring their personal knowledge of certain places? Maybe they know things about their experiences at coffee shops or bedrooms or a park. Landscape photography is a form of documentary photography that describes the geography of an area or can or invokes a sense of place. Artists working in this genre may doc might document the build environment, the vernacular structure, nature, or evidence of the presence or impact people on the land. I like to um, include uh, some quotes. It's from This is from The Poetics of Space from Gaston Bouchard. Therefore, the places in which we have experienced daydreaming reconstitute themselves in a new daydream. And it is because of our memories of former dwelling places are we lived as daydreams. These dwelling places of the past remain in us for all time. So Amanda Taves, and here is her website if you want to click on it and find more. This PDF is available for download on Canvas. She explores the state sales for another of her projects, but she was really interested in sort of the space and these intimate encounters of going to these estate sales. And you may think about when you go to an estate sale, maybe someone has passed, maybe someone has to downsize because they need money, but there's something very intimate about allowing someone in your home and selling your prize purchases or your things that you have loved. 
So these photographs have these intimate encounters, and they appear out of place. They're honest. They might infer to the habits or physical interactions of who the space and the contents refer to. A lot of them are through, she uses framing. So we have these frames here and here, um, shooting in and out of windows. So it's sort of a duality of space of the interior looking out exterior and interior working together in these spaces using natural light and thinking about what the space is viewing out and what that might mean for a person who lived there these are mostly midwestern homes as she lives in the chicagoland area The light is very key in these photographs. Alex Lim. So he shoots the interiors of libraries as for these intimate spaces, quiet, thinking about what happens in a library, who visits it. So People are important when we look at these photographs, but it's not about the people, but it's about the place, the location. Everyone has their own connection. When I look at these photographs, I can get the smell, the library in my nose, and thinking about my memories and my feelings there. And it may be different from person to person, but there's something really nice about the connection to it that isn't so quite personal. This quote. Suburbia fails us. It is an idea of a place rather than a place. The way you can tell is because there's so many places in the country that seem like no place in particular. Linda Kuhn. So she photographs for these uh, lost suburban areas sort of where things are dying, these sort of replicas, kind of where suburbia is dying within her work. There's this sadness, but sort of warmth that I get from these photographs that I feel from, it makes me think of being a child running around. What does it make you think of? Does it elicit any sort of memory? A house that's been experienced is not of an inert box. Inhabited spaces transcends geometrical space. Victoria Hogan. So she photographs these homes. Um, she's from, I believe, from the East Coast, and she moved to the Vegas area for grad school, and she was very interested in the types of homes of being so different from what she grew up in. And these sort of desert landscapes and how these people lived. How does the front yard, which is sort of this communal space, this welcoming to the home is transcribed in from place to place. She's using her photography as an act of discovery. She finds something odd about her new surrounding and uses her camera to explore her place and feel connection to it. To the complaint, there are no people in these photographs, I respond. There are always two people, the photographer and the viewer, Ansel Adams. Elliot Dunkick. Sort of these grand gestures and sort of these mountain suburban places in his work. Looking at the area surrounding him. Another, another tool, use your camera to explore somewhere new. 
Wake up at different hours of the day to photograph what's around you. There's sort of this death and life in this photo, which I think is so gorgeous. You have this hotel over here, which means people are visiting the area, whether or not for work or passing by on the, the highway. But then there's like this pile of old tires, this sort of S curve that's leading me over to these, these trailers, which means something is happening, but it's so disconnected between here. There's something really great about the juxtaposition in this photograph. It's not down in any map. True places never are. David Kressler. So another landscape photography. We are in a, a gorgeous place for landscape photography around us. So he goes to these these monuments and it kind of takes what wouldn't be the normal photograph. But also think about the viewpoints where whoever constructed the area said that that's where we are going to look at. And it's more than just look at this beautiful place, but it's this is the place we're supposed to look at the beautiful place. And it's, it's this duality of place which is deeper than just, oh, I took a snapshot of this, this, these mountains, but there's this, this place where we're told to go to, there's some information, and then there's that place, there's two places going on. Places matter. Their rules, their scale, their design, include or exclude civil society, pedestrianism, equality, diversity, economic or otherwise, understanding of where water comes from and garbage goes, consumption or conservation. They map our lives. Isan Barari. So he focuses on landscapes and urban environments. Um, so he looks at his city of Tehran, and he wants to show the sort of plural reality of Tehran, um, how it's not just this sad place, but there's, there's life there, there's things happening, and it's got these two realities of what's going on in the Middle East. Amanda Bell. Looking how nature exists in sort of a where people live. Isolation. You can go inside. A lot of these photographers are shooting outside, but you're welcome to explore an interior place. I looked around the rooms and I did not see as rooms, but more as a landscape for my emotions, a biography of my me memory. So what does a room mean in someone's domestic interior space that we are allowed in?
this is about body and about people, but it's not about the person. It's about the location. What happens on that couch bed? What memories can you pull from it? The softness. Asking of your viewer to really connect to the scene and let them have an empathy of it. So we're going to look at some student work of how students explore interiors and exteriors, spaces and places. Some of the places were familiar, some of the places were not. Some of the places they weren't technically allowed to visit. Think about the details. So if you're exploring a exterior place, you may want to use a uh, aperture of about f22 to get that depth in so get all that focal range all of those details of the cacti what's in the interior and what's in the exterior if you're focusing on something a little more soft maybe you kind of close down um, a bit think about light in Arizona, we have that harsh, harsh sun, sunny every day, and uh, that tends to kind of give you boring photographs. So think about where the sun rises or sets, it can give you that gorgeous light. Exploring what you can do at night and taking your ISO way up. Exploring, use as an excuse to visit other areas. Think about framing and what we can view and not view. So I want you to have fun with this assignment. There will be um, a chance to do a uh, artist inspiration and there'll be another artist lecture. If you have questions please message me but I'm really excited for you to get on this sort of larger photography assignment and I hope you enjoy and look at some interesting photographers, go to their websites, see what else they're working on.